Yeah, good morning to all of you. My name is Ashutosh Singh. So today we will discuss about the heat transfer concept for one dimensional steady state heat conduction equation for a plane ball. So this is lecture number 2 for heat transfer through plane ball and a composite uh, heat transfer process are classified into three types. the first is conduction which is defined as the transfer of heat occurring through inverting matter without bulk motion of the matter in figure 1.1 shows the process pictorially in this figure we see that there are two surface one surface which is maintained at a very high temperature that is t high and the other surface that is which is maintained at a lower temperature this is too low so there is a huge huge difference between t high and t low and the heat transfer take place from the high temperature to low temperature this is a solid wall this is a solid wall which uh, have a conductivity k throughout the material as we assume that the material is homogeneous and isentropic throughout the surfaces so uh, a solid has one surface at a very high temperature and one at another temperature lower temperature this type of heat conduction can occur for example through a turbine jet blades and uh, the outside surface which is exposed to gases uh, from the combustor it is a very higher temperature than the other side which has uh, cooling air next to it the level of wall temperature is uh, critical for a tur turbine blade so in this diagram we can easily understand that the heat transfer take place from t high to to t low temperature and this is a plane wall this is a solid wall and the heat transfer rate is denoted by a small q dot next is the second heat transfer process is a convection process or a heat transfer due to a flowing fluid so the fluid can be gases or a liquid both have, both have application in aerospace technology in convection heat transfer the heat is moved through the bulk transfer of a uni a non uniform temperature fluid so we see that in case of conduction the heat transfer take place generally in solids but the, uh, but there is no bulk motion but in case of convection there is a huge bulk motion and there is a velocity evident the third process is known as the heat transfer through a radiation uh, we can say the third process is radiation or transmission of energy through space without the necessary presence of matter radiation is the only method for heat transfer in space and uh, radiation can be impo important even in situation in which there is an inverting medium a familiar example is the heat transfer from a glowing piece of a metal or from a fire so today we will focus on the heat transfer through conduction so let us start heat transfer through conduction we will start by examining conduction heat transfer we must first determine how to relate the heat transfer to other properties that is mechanical thermal geoth geometrical so the answer to this is rotated in experiment but it can be motivated by considering heat transfer along a bar assuming two heat reservoir t a and t b as shown in figure 2.1 2.1 we can say we, uh, we can see uh, there is a two surfaces uh, this is t a and t b and uh, the rate of heat transfer that is q dot which is flowing from t a to t b temperature and the uh, length or yeah, thickness of the bar assumed to be l so it is noted that the heat transfer rate q is a function of temperature of the two reservoir the bar geometry and the bar properties this can be expressed that is q we can say the q is a function of the temperature this is ta the temperature of tb bar geometry and bar property so it is remembered always remembered that the heat transfer that is q dot is a function of temperature only if there is a no temperature difference there will be no heat transfer take place so it also seems reasonably to postulate that the heat transfer q should depends on the temperature difference ta minus tb if ta minus tb is zero then the heat transfer should also be zero 
the temperature dependence can therefore be expressed that is q is a function of ta minus tb and ta and tb and bar geometry and bar properties so t where ta and tb are the temperature of the bar at the two surfaces we can see easily on this diagram 2.1 this is the heat transfer along a bar next is the steady state heat dimension conduction for a one dimensional equation so this we can say this we can see in this diagram the rate of heat transfer this is qx is flowing in a x direction only the qy and qz the qy is a heat transfer in y direction and qz is a heat flow in a z direction will be zero we assume that the heat transfer take place only in x direction and uh, and the conductivity of the material throughout the space will be constant for one dimensional heat conduction the temperature depending on a one variable only and uh, we we can devise a basic dis description uh, description of the process the first law in control volume we assume a control volume so the first law in control volume from with no shaft work and no pass flow reduce the statement that is del the summation of del q for all surface is equal to zero so we can uh, we can easily understand that the heat transfer take place the total summation of heat transfer will be zero and there is no mass flow so as per the fourier law we derived the fourier law in the previous chapter previous uh, series the as per the fourier law the rate of heat transfer that is q is a directly proportional to the area and the temperature gradient in the direction of heat flow and we are in this equation in this equation we see this is k k is the thermal conductivity of the material and the minus k sign represents that the heat transfer take place from higher temperature to the lower temperature this equation is a fourier equation for heat conduction equation through a plane wall so steady state one dimensional heat conduction equation so the qx this is qx is a heat transfer rate at a distance x is equal to minus k a dt by dx this is equation number 2.9 so the heat transfer rate on the right side that is qx plus dx is equal to q dot x plus a small incremental change in the heat transfer rate this is q dq dot divided by dx multiplied by dx plus dot 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 so using the condition of overall heat transfer and the expression 2.9 and 2.0 2.10 the qx minus qx plus uh, del q divided by dx multiplied by dx is equal to zero this is a fundamental law of energy con conservation so taking the limit taking the limits as dx approaches zero we obtain the del qx divided by dx is equal to zero this is a basic equation for next is <coughs> the next is d by dx uh, multiply by k a dt by dx is equal to zero this is equation number 2.12b where k is equal to constant and uh, this is thermal conductivity if the property of the bar are independent of temperature this reduced to d by dx k dt by dx is equal to zero assuming the chain rule we apply chain rule the equation will be the equation of 2.13a will be d square t by dx square plus 1 upon a da by dx multiply by dt by dx is equal to zero where d square t by dx square is equal to the order of second order equation and the equation 2.13a and 2.13b describe the temperature field for quasi quasi static one dimensional steady state heat transfer equation we now apply this on some example the temperature boundary condition for a slab we assume a slab the heat transfer through a plane slab having a temperature t1 and the temperature t2 the thickness of the slab is l and the boundary conditions we can see the boundary condition at x is equal to 0 the temperature will be t is equal to t1 and the temperature x is equal to x2 yeah x is equal to l the temperature will be t is equal to t2 so for this configuration the area is not a function of x because area is constant throughout the length of the slab so therefore the equation 2.13 becomes d square t divided by dx square is equal to 0 the equation 2.14 can can be integrated immediately to yield dt by dx is equal to a 
t is equal to a x plus b where a and b are the constant this is expression is 2.16 the equation 2.16 is an expression for the temperature field where a and b are the constant for integration for a second order equation such as 2.14 we need two boundary condition to determine the a and b so for calculating the variable a and b we use two boundary condition the first one is at x is equal to 0 t is equal to t1 and uh, at x is equal to l t is equal to t2 so apply these boundary condition in the fundamental equation we uh, we calculated the values of a and b the values of a will be t2 minus t1 divided by l putting the value of a in the equation number 2.16 with this expression the for a and b the temperature distribution can be written as tx is equal to t1 plus t2 minus t1 divided by l multiply by x where t1 comma t2 are the temperatures and uh, l is equal to the length of the slab so from the figure 2.4 it is very clear that the t1 and t2 the, the line joining between t1 and t2 should be linear uh, the this linear variation in a temperature is shown in the figure 2.14 for situation in which t1 is greater than t2 if t2 is greater than t1 the heat transfer take place from t2 to t1 for finally the heat flux which is flowing through the t1 and t2 this is q is equal to minus k a dt by dx this is a fourier law and minus k dt by dx is equal to minus k t2 minus t1 divided by l is equal to constant so where t1 minus t2 divided by l is equal to the temperature gradient between the wall materials so finally we can uh, finally we can calculate the heat transfer for a plane slab is equal to minus k multiplied by t2 minus t1 divided by l so t1 minus t2 yeah t2 minus t1 is a temperature difference